Welcome everybody to the Autism Daily. Today's question is really one about why is autism called a spectrum disorder? I am doing this at school, so if you hear children in the background, that's uh, where this is coming from. Let's look at it. Let's look at why autism is called a spectrum disorder. So autism presents itself very differently in every single person. I've said it before during one of my autism daily chats, and I'll say it again. Autism, if you've, if you've met one child with autism or one person with autism, that is all you've met. You've met one. And yes, it is a neurodevelopmental disability, but um, it causes problems for, for the individual with speech and language development. It causes problems with restricted interests. It causes problems with repetitive behaviors and also from a social, emotional, and interaction perspective. But the severity is just so different. You know, you could, you could have a child that is going to be nonverbal at the age of two or three, go on to developing speech, and, and you know, speaks perfectly well, um, and goes into a mainstream type schooling environment, and that child has autism spectrum disorder. In the same breath, you could have my daughter, um, Maddie, profoundly autistic, 14 years old, still nonverbal, and a small percentage of children with autism spectrum disorder will grow up to be nonverbal adults. Some children, when they're diagnosed, will um, already speak. You know, speech or not speaking isn't, isn't a prerequisite for is the child or isn't the child autistic. Many people um, or many children are diagnosed with autism when they do speak. On the contrary, in recent years, many adults are diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. And, um, you know, it, it just is so different for every single child. We can look at a couple of other things that differ, things like comorbidities. Some children have comorbidities, others don't. Some children really struggle or individuals really struggle with sensory challenges or what they refer to as sensory integration um, disorder. Others don't. Others aren't as sensory sensitive. The same goes with motor planning challenges. You know, um, the seeing of danger, bumping into things. Some children really battle with, with where they fit into space and, and, and the whole spatial geometry and how things fit into each other. And other children don't. You know, um, some children have gut problems, tummy problems, uh, or gastrointestinal problems is probably the correct terminology whilst others don't really battle with it. And then there's the repetitive behavior side. Some children's repetitive behaviors is a lot more obvious than others. So with my daughter who, you know, kind of flaps her arms and, you know, hums and, and blocks her ears and lines up and sorts everything and, and her restrictive behaviors of only wanting to be surrounded by animals and everything animal related is very obvious. Um, but there's so many others that may not be as obvious. And these are really the reasons why um, autism is called a spectrum disorder, is because of the severity levels in which it presents itself. I hope that this has answered your questions today. Uh, we look forward to another session with you soon. Have a good day or a good evening, good morning, wherever you are listening to this today. We'll see you soon.